The Cauchy-Riemann equations are first introduced in the Cauchy-Riemann theorem, which states that if a function is differentiable at some point in the complex plane, then the Cauchy-Riemann equations must be fulfilled at the same point. And these equations are simply a relation between the partial derivatives of the real value functions u and v, which makes up our function f here. And this theorem can be more generally expanded to say that if a function is differentiable in a region, then the Cauchy-Riemann equations also must hold in the same region. But you guys are probably dying right now to hear the proof, so let's get going. The plan is simply to use the derivative for our function f here, and then use the fact that we know that this derivative exists, and therefore the derivative must be independent of a way. Just recall to real value functions, for example. If a limit exists for a real value function, then the left and right side limit had to be the same, right? And this principle can also be used for complex functions. But there is one big difference between taking the derivative for a complex function and take the derivative for a real value function. When you took the derivative for a real value function, you simply let delta x approach zero, right? And this could be done in two ways, either went from the left or from the right. And this comes from the fact that a real number can be represented on a line. But this all changed when we are talking about complex numbers. Since complex number needs two lines, right, to be represented, you need a real value line and an imaginary line. So if I want to approach, let's say, zero here, for example, then I can do it in many more ways, right? I can come from above, I can come from below, I can come from right, or even come in something like this. They are all fine. They are all paths that get me closer and closer to the number zero. But this means that there are infinite many ways to approach the number zero. And all of these paths must agree for a limit to exist. And to prove this theorem, we are simply going to let two specific paths be equal to each other. But before we do that, we are going to have to rewrite our original expression for the derivative. So by using the fact that delta c is equal to delta x plus i delta y, we get the following short expression. And the next step is to determine the derivative for two separate paths. So the first way to approach zero is to go along the real axis. And if we go along the real axis, then we know that delta y is going to be equal to zero. So the expression for delta c is simply going to become delta x. And this means that the big expression for a derivative will become the following. And the next step is to break this big expression up into two separate terms. So the first term will include all the u functions, and the next term will include all the v functions. So from this we can see that the first term is simply the partial derivative of u with respect to x. And the second term is simply i times the partial derivative of v with respect to x. So this was one way to determine the derivative. And the next step is to do it once more, but this time for another path. So let's say we we'll go along the imaginary axis this time. That means that delta x is equal to zero. So the expression for delta c is simply going to become i times delta y. And this means that the big expression for a derivative will become the following. And if we once more break this expression up into two separate terms, then we get the following. And we can simplify the second term by using the fact that we've got i in the denominator and numerator. And the first term can be simplified by using the fact that a i in the denominator is the same as a minus i in the numerator. And now we can see that the first term is simply minus i times the partial derivative of u with respect to y. And the second term 
is the partial derivative of v with respect to y. And from this we can draw the conclusion that since the derivative exists, we know that all different paths must agree. So these two complex numbers must be the same. And for two complex numbers to be the same, the imaginary part and the real part must agree. And this simply gives us the following relations, which you can see are the Cauchy-Riemann equations. And with that, we have managed to prove that if a function is differentiable at some point in the complex plane, then the function must fulfill the Cauchy-Riemann equations at the same point. Thanks for watching.